Hey, Starvation, what's up? It's the Culture Objective here, investigating your favorite albums, and today I'm going to be doing an album review on the new Gorilla Toss album, Famously Alive. So, Gorilla Toss is an American neo psych pop rock dance outfit, and they have been releasing music for quite some time now. A while ago, they released a couple albums that I really, really enjoy. The albums GT Ultra from 2017, as well as Twisted Crystal from 2019. Both of these albums feature some of the most energetic, lively, passionate, and quirky psych dance pop rock songs I've heard for a while. And it is tracks like... Jackie's Daughter and Betty Dreams of Green Men that make me really look forward to whatever the band's gonna go next. And finally, this year they have released Famously Alive, a while ago in fact, but I've planned to review this album for a while, but I only had the chance today. So this time they have changed their musical direction a little bit. On Famously Alive, the band goes full speed ahead with the neo-psych sound, making some really super sour and bright tracks where the instrumentals just slather on top of another. And this album is just nowhere near as groovy or as dancey as their past work, which I think is one of their strongest suits actually, because their tracks are usually very groovy and danceable. I mean, check out the track Meteorological. But anyways, we have this album where track after track after track, it is a total freaking trip. It's just super sour and bright and psychedelic and disorienting and alien. It's it's basically the goal of this album. And I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't enjoy this album as much. It's because the tracks here are kind of similar to one another. There isn't as much versatility in this album as I would have liked it to, but also production-wise, it's it can get kind of overwhelming at times. Take the album opener, Cannibal Capital. It starts off with these very interesting glitchy noise collage, but a little bit later the track becomes this really weird and, and almost nightmarish track where we have these angular guitars and these layered auto-tuned vocals. And there are a lot of layers of vocals, but there are even more layers of, of instrumentals just slapped on top of one another again and again and again. It's really dense. It feels like I'm listening to 20 layers of sound happening at once. It's very overwhelming. And as an album opener, I just don't know what to say. And then we have the title track with the blissful bright guitar chords and I really like the funny lyrics about celebrity culture and fame but unfortunately I think the vocals and the melodies on this track is just a little rigid and this issue also takes place in many other tracks on this album. However there are also a few tracks that I actually kind of like like the track Mermaid Airplane. This track is more poppy, more fun, it has some really 80s airy drums and I think the melodies are really catchy and also really modern. Like, I feel like in, in its core, melodically, this track is like a millennial pop song, but it's just crushed and psyched up to a point where it's just super quirky and weird and I really like that. I also really like the track Wild Fantasy, the next track, which goes to a more rock-oriented direction. The vocals are completely buried underneath hundreds and thousands of layers of screaming synths, but it actually adds to the track because of the pounding drums. It's just very disorienting. The track Excitable Girls is definitely one of the more experimental tracks in the track list. It has these very 70s disco synths, except the tones of these synths keep on changing and shifting. It's just so full of dynamic, it's really weird. And then we have the track I Got Spirit, which sounds like a pop song produced under PC music, except it's uh, neo-psych rock. It's summery and uh, it's a total trip. And we also have the track Happy Me, which I also really like. The instrumentals on this track are a little bit more toned down. We got some really quirky keyboards, some tongue-in-cheek vocal melodies, and we have lyrics about being happy and enjoying life and escapism. Uh, and um, I, I can't hear perfectly fine when I listen to the track, 
to the lyrics, but uh, one of the lines basically compares like being happy to like war crime, which is really funny, and uh, definitely a highlight in the track list. But still, despite these highlights, the rest of the album are just okay. I really appreciate the direction they're going by making everything super dreamy and psychedelic and weird. But again, with this style, they can still be so much more creative than uh, what they have now. The, the album ending, Heathen and Me, once again sounds like a really modern millennial pop rock track, except really sour. But I just don't see anything all that special about it. The track Live Expo Exponential has a really weird skippy rhythm, which is cool. But this rhythm doesn't build up too much. And also the track Pyramid Hum is a total freaking mess. It sounds like four songs melted into each other without any rhyme or reason. Earlier in the track list, I talked about a track where the synths kind of change tonally. But that worked because the synths hold the track together. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Gorilla Toss, Famously Alive, has a lot of potential, and I hope this potential is realized more. Feeling a light 6 out of 10 for this album. So, have you listened to the latest Gorilla Toss album? For 1 to 10, I'm rate it, like it, like it, subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching.